an original presentation from America's premier audio theater group, Seeing Ear Theater. There is a sweet little horror story that is only two sentences long. The last man on earth sat alone in a room. There was a knock at the door. Two sentences and an ellipsis of three dots. The horror, of course, isn't in the story at all. It's in the ellipsis, the implication of what knocked at the door. Faced with the unknown, the human mind supplies something vaguely horrible. But it wasn't horrible, really. Listen. The last man on earth sat alone in a room. Come in. Hello, George. Hello, Walter. Have a seat. Oh, I forgot. Zans, don't sit. You have nothing on your anatomy to sit on. <laughs> so? Point one. You will please henceforth sit with your chair facing the other way. You mean toward this blank wall? Yes. The wall... It's transparent, isn't it? I mean, on the other side. It is transparent. Uh -huh. You've got this rigged so that your fellow Zans can observe me anytime they wish? Only during regular hours. I see. This is a kind of zoo, isn't it? When you Zans destroyed the life on this planet, you spared me as a specimen for display, am I right? Yes. And if I don't turn my chair around so that Zan tourists... Colonists. Oh, sorry. Colonists can get a good view. What then? You'll kill me? I ask, hopefully. We will take away your books. Oh, ha, ha, ha. You win, George. <laughs> Tell me, how many other animals besides me do you have in this zoo of yours? Two hundred and sixteen. Hmm. Hardly a representative sample. Even a Bush League zoo can beat that. <laughs> Could beat that, I should say, if there were any Bush League zoos still standing. What did you do, just uh, pick us at random? Random samples, yes. All species would have been too many. Mm -hmm. Male and female, each of 100 varieties. Mm. And w w what do you feed them? The carnivores, I mean. We make feed. Synthetic. Oh, smart. And the flora? You've got a collection of that, too? Flora not hurt by vibrations. It is still growing. Ah, oh, good for the flora. You weren't as hard on it, then, as you were on the fauna. <laughs> well, George, you started out with point one. I gather you have a point two lurking somewhere. What is it? There is something we do not understand. Two of the other animals sleep and do not wake. They are cold. Mm, well, it happens in the best regulated zoos, George. Probably not a thing wrong with them, except they're dead. Dead? That means stopped. But nothing stopped them. Each was alone. Haven't you ever heard of natural death? Death is when a being is killed, stopped from living. Hmm. How old are you, George? Sixteen. Sixteen? Why, well, you're a whippersnapper. A what? A whippersnapper, a mere lad, a shaver, a youth. Yes, a youth. My, my. Sixteen years old, you say? Not years. The Zed do not reckon time as you do. Your planet was around your sun about 7,000 times since I was born. <laughs> A babe in arms. Zed do not have arms. Well, whatever you call those things. Look, George, 
you've got something to learn about this planet you're on. There's a guy down here who doesn't hang around where you come from. An old man with a beard and a scythe and an hourglass. Your vibrations didn't kill him. Where is he? Everywhere and nowhere. He's called the Grim Reaper, George. Old man death. Living things here sometimes just expire when the Reaper taps them on the shoulder. He stopped the two creatures. He will stop more. Yeah, well, could be. Say, George, how about taking me to those animals who won't wake up? Is that against the rules? No. Come. Come in. Hello, George. Hello, Walter. Funny thing, George. I fell asleep while I was reading last night, and when I woke up this morning, I was here in a big new place. I know. Yeah, I know. You know. And I suspect you have something or someone for me this morning. Yes. Ah. Good morning, miss. Uh, good, good morning. Walter Phelan, in case George didn't tell you my name. <laughs> George tries to be polite, but he doesn't know all our ways. George? The Zan. I call him George. I call them all George, since I can't tell them apart. And, uh, you are? Oh, uh, sorry. Grace Evans? Uh, Mr. Uh... Phelan. Mr. Phelan. What's this all about? Why did they bring me here? Uh, well, you can probably guess why. But let's go back a second. Do you know what's happened otherwise? You mean that they... The Zan have killed everyone? Yes. Please, Grace, sit down. You... And I are the last Homo sapiens sapiens in the universe. I was afraid of that. Well, you're taking it very bravely. <laughs> Not so bravely, Mr. Phelan. I spent the better part of the last two days in hysterics. It's out of my system now. Uh, at least for the moment. Well, I hope it helps to have another human being to talk to. It certainly helps me. Uh, let me be frank, Mr. Phelan. I have mixed feelings about being here with a strange man. Oh, dear me, I, <laughs> I hope I'm not that strange. Oh, no, <laughs> no, I, I, I didn't mean I that you... I was making a joke, Miss Evans. Sorry. My sense of humor has taken a beating in the last 36 hours. Oh, I, I quite understand. Uh, let... Let me assure you that I am not a criminal or a sex maniac, and I don't think I'm insane. Before I was forcibly retired by the Zan, I was a professor of anthropology at Nathan University. I'm a widower. That is, I was a widower even before the Zan came. I will not harm you unless I bore you to death, and I will not force my attentions on you. But, uh... They're expecting us to... Perhaps. Earth-style mating seems a new thing to them. Don't the Zan, uh, mate? Uh, they're bisexual. And even at that, renewing the species is apparently an infrequent occurrence among them. Zan don't experience natural death, you see. They don't grow old and die like we do... Unless some outside force stops them, as they say, they seem to live forever. George was totally bewildered yesterday when two of us just up and died. Two of us? Two of us animals. This is a zoo, and we are on exhibit. Oh, God! Mm, yes, they, they can see through that wall. We're animals in a zoo! Well, it, it could be worse. 
They've done a very nice job of fixing up this natural habitat. <laughs> I mean, on my salary at the university, I could never have afforded a large home like this. It has all the modern conveniences. Except a way out. Mm-hmm. We even have that. We just can't use it. Look, this couch is a hide bed I can make myself quite comfortable here, and you can have the bedroom all to yourself. You don't have to even speak to me if you don't want to. Apparently the VCR works. George will happily supply you with videotapes or any other pastime paraphernalia you may require. See, he has already given me all these books. I, I love to read. Do you read? Uh, I, I'm sorry, do I what? Read. Do you like to read? Well, I guess so. Uh, I, I mean, I was a voracious reader. Once, before the Zan. Hmm. B.Z., as it were. Please don't joke. I'm sorry. I don't see anything to joke about. Uh, Humor might be our best defense. If you were a man, you'd be thinking of some way to... They can't be killed? The Zan? Oh, yes. Barring accident, they may live forever, but I imagine that anything that would kill us would kill them, too. They look very different, but their physiology is about the same as ours. They don't feel pain. That would be nice, if it were true. Are you sure? I tried to inflict some. I tore a good bit of flesh off one of them. He bled profusely, but it didn't bother him at all. It didn't even annoy him. He didn't strike back or punish me or... They don't have emotions, at least not as we understand emotions. How many of them do you think there are? Mm, Maybe 200... At least on this particular spaceship. Did you see their spaceship? Yes, it's as big as a mountain. Almost. They're obviously an advance party sent to make the Earth ready for Zan colonization. Why our world? I guess it's the closest habitable planet. There's no way to stop them, is there? No way to escape, no way to get back at them. Well... Come in. Hello, George. Hello, Walter. What's on your mind, George? Another creature sleeps and will not wake. A small furry one called a weasel. Well, it happens, George. Old man death. I told you about him. And worse, a Zan has died this morning. Is that worse? You've got to get used to it, George. If you're going to hang out in this neck of the solar system, there's nothing you can do about it. Well? About the weasel. You advise the same? Mm-hmm. Probably won't do any good, but why not? What was that all about? It might work, Martha. Martha? My name is Grace, Mr. Phelan. What might work? Uh, my name is Walter Grace. There's... No point in standing on ceremony. Martha is my wife's name. She died several years ago. You remind me of her. You were saying that something might work. What did you mean? Oh, we'll know tomorrow. We'll know what tomorrow? (laughs) In academia, we learn not to publish our findings until we're confident of them. Then why did you bring it up? You asked me a question. I did? You asked what the Zan and I were talking about. What were you talking about? Tomorrow. And? That's when we shall know. Know what? (laughs) What I can't discuss until then. Oh, you're infuriating. (laughs) It's funny. Martha used to say the same thing. Day four of year one, A.Z. Ah, you still mad at me? Are you going to tell me what you meant yesterday? Not quite yet. Then I'm still mad at you. C'est bien dommage. I uh, made some coffee. Would you like some? Powdered creamer, sugar? I can get it myself. You're welcome. Come in. Hello, George. Hello, Walter. And to what do we owe the honor today? We go. Our council met and decided. You're leaving? I take it that another Zan died? Last night. This is planet of death. Well, you sure did your share. 
You're leaving 213 alive, but that's out of quite a few billion. Don't hurry back. Is there anything we can do? Yes, you can step on it. And you can leave our door unlocked, but not the others. We'll take care of the others. As you wish. What? How did... Shh, shh, shh. Let's hear them blast off. It's a sound I want to hear and remember. It'll take them hours, days, to get that thing off the ground. The sweet sound of success. Grace, there was a snake in the Garden of Eden that got the human race in a lot of trouble, but today, one of its descendants redeemed it. A rattler. A rattlesnake killed the two Zan? The Zan were very naive about this place. Two animals died the day before yesterday. One of them was a rattlesnake. This gave me an idea. I figured that poisonous life forms may be unknown to them, and as we talked about yesterday, their metabolism could just be vulnerable to terrestrial toxins. And, as it turns out, I guessed right on both counts. But how did the rattlesnake poison the Zan if it was dead? The dead one didn't. It had a mate, two by two, a hundred species, two hundred samples, male and female. I told the Zan that the remaining rattler would waste away from loneliness. If you want to preserve it, I said, you have to give it plenty of affection. Well, they'd never heard of affection before, especially petting. They, earth creatures, especially snakes, just love to be held and stroked. <laughs> the other dead animal was a duck, so I demonstrated with its mate. Thank God it was more or less tame. It did try to nip me, which I told the Zan was a sign of its favorable response to the petting. We're free. Yes. What now? Civilization as we knew it is finished. We can begin a new one. A new one? Yes. It's up to us, Grace. We have a whole world to plan. We'll have to let the animals out of the ark, and that will take some thinking and deciding. The herbivores we can release immediately. The meat-eaters, the predators. What do we do with them? Maybe we can find the Zan machine they use to make synthetic food. And the human race, Grace. We have to make a decision about that, too. A very important decision. No. It was a nice race, even if nobody won. It could be a nice race again, even a better one. That is, if we decide to... No! Think it over, Grace. Take your time, but come back. Walter Phelan sat waiting thinking out all the things that had to be done once he started, but in no hurry to start. After a while, he heard, he smiled a little. See, it wasn't horrible, really. The last man on earth sat alone in a room. 